Hello and welcome to the Majlis, the podcast by Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, focusing on Central Asia. I'm Mohammed Tahir, your host here in Washington, D.C. As the election day quickly approaching, campaigns are gearing up in Kyrgyzstan to elect the next president. President Atambayev not running for the office, but the field is crowded, agendas are diverse, and competition is fierce in this controversial election process about which criticisms are coming from left and right on all sorts of issues. Among the concerns are sentencing of a presidential hopeful Tekabayev, current in the future rule and intentions of the sitting president Atambayev, the country's apparent slide towards Russia and increasing economic challenges. So what is at stake in this elections? To discuss the topic, I'm joined by Bakit Bashimov, who is the former Kyrgyz parliamentarian and currently professor at the Northeastern University in Boston. Timur Toktonaliev is joining us, who is the Central Asia editor at the Institute for War and Peace Reporting, and Bruce Panier, editor of Radio for Europe, Radio Liberty's Central Asia blog called Kishlok Owazi. Welcome on board, gentlemen. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank okay. you. So the election campaigns have kicked off on September 10, few days on since then. Describe us, Temur, the atmosphere, the political scene on the ground. Well, uh, certainly if you walk, for example, in the streets of Bishkek, you might uh, notice too much, I would say, you know, billboards and different agitation uh, pictures and uh, papers of two major candidates. First, it is Sorum by Jean Bekov. He's a member of the uh, presidential social D- democratic party, as the PK, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the second one is Umurbek Babanov. He's a very uh, famous politician, uh, wealthy businessman, yeah, and a leader of the Respublika uh, faction in the uh, parliament, yeah. And currently, it's very symbolic that they actually have started their. Uh, campaign, agitation campaign in the south part of Kyrgyzstan. Yeah. Currently, for example, uh, Sorum by Jambekov, he is uh, actually touring in Jalalabad uh, region. It's the uh, second major uh, oblast in, in uh, Kyrgyzstan. Yeah? And he is meeting with uh, different uh, people and providing his ideas and, uh, I don't know, making some promises, while Umrubek Babanov, he is actually uh, very active in Osh Oblast, particularly the, uh, as I remember today or yesterday, he met with uh, different uh, people in Osh city. B- but uh, it's uh, worth to point that we actually have 13 candidates. Yeah. Yeah? However, r- rest candidates are not so you know visible and active. Um, we can say after these two candidates, maybe go Temir Sariyev. He is more uh, modestly campaigning in northern part, in Chuyu Oblast. Maybe since uh, he uh, hasn't got uh, so much financial and administration resources as uh, previous two candidates yeah and also we have uh, Bakat Torobayev uh, he is very popular in particularly in Jalalabad Oblast yeah he is not uh, kind of a countrywide politician mm. uh, about uh, uh, rest candidates <laughs> I can say exactly because we are not uh, seeing that they are active actually mm, interesting so you are talking about two main candidates uh, what are the qualities which brings them uh, on the front well, uh, Sorumba Jambekov, uh, he actually has been a uh, prime minister until the end of August. Uh, yeah. He's been, uh, he was uh, prime minister for one year, and kind and actually he is kind of. Uh, you, you know, seen as as a candidate who logically will continue the current policy of Almazbek Atambayev. They actually uh, have been very close, especially since 2010, maybe before, right? And uh, Soroma Jambekov, he was governor of Osh Oblast, yeah? And uh, in the beginning of 2016, he actually called to the Bishkek and was appointed as a prime minister. And to be honest, you know, until then, nobody actually um, didn't uh, realize that he would be a next president. Mm. Yeah. And it was some kind of a, not surprise, but it was a little bit, you know, unexpected that actually uh, Atambayev's team selected, you know, particularly this person, Soroma Jambekov. As I remember, he is older than 60 years and he was not so active in politics, actually. Mm. And he generally by his psychologically 
portrayed. He is not seen kind of a, you know, active and very keen person to make some reforms and to make some big decisions. Yeah. Mm. And uh, actually uh, by uh, local experts, by civil society, he is more considered kind of a very comfortable person for Atambayev and for his group. Mm. Yeah. Okay. While uh, Umrbek Babanov, he yeah. has uh, another uh, kind of uh, image. Yeah, he is, uh, you know, uh, comparably uh, young, kind of uh, about uh, 50 years old, as I remember. Yeah, and when he was a prime minister in 2012, he tried to make some reforms. We actually can talk if they were successful or not. But still, he is actually considered kind of a very active and a person who can bring more kind of, you know, mm. dynamic and mm. uh, different, maybe uh, promising changes uh, oh. to the Kyrgyzstan. Okay. Uh, Bakit, what Temur is uh, talking about is two main uh, politicians who have, uh, according to him, a real chance of a victory. So what do you know about these two personalities? And is the Babanov is in a position to offer a tough challenge uh, to Jindikov? Before saying about the uh, key candidates who... Yeah. Uh, have the uh, ability to mobilize uh, electorate. I would like to say that we actually discussing two uh, important uh, things. One large and second one inside of this large, the smaller. The large is uh, it's a transformation of Kyrgyzstan and Kyrgyzstan's motion toward uh, democracy. And I think that these elections will uh, uh, just one step uh, forward, uh, in my view, certainly. And uh, uh, second, it's a smaller picture. It's a Kyrgyz form of uh, political succession. And therefore, if we just focus our attention to the actual picture inside of Kyrgyzstan, among these 13 uh, candidates, Mm -hmm. we can see two uh, groups of uh, candidates. The first groups are who the candidates who have the real chances uh, to win. And, and the second t- one, uh, those who will divide the votes, but will not uh, challenge the uh, key uh, candidates. Uh, among the, f- the key candidates, I see the following picture. Uh, beginning this uh, debate, you spoke that uh, Almazbek Atambayev is not running uh, for election. Uh, formally, yes, but actually he is run for election. And I think he would like to get his second term because if he will succeed in promotion of uh, his uh, candidate, uh, Jane Becker, who has real chances to win, hmm. uh, actually he will uh, continue to rule the country continue to rule the country. And you can see this kind of model in uh, some post-Soviet uh, countries. Uh, for instance, uh, Medvedev, uh, Putin, and uh, this kind. And he would like to create this picture. And uh, therefore, uh, in comparison with his uh, opponents, uh, Atambayev, uh, really focusing on a, a mid- and long-term uh, just uh, political uh, processes. And, uh, the second uh, candidate who has uh, the chances to win is uh, Babana. And therefore, it seems to me, within this debate, it's time to discuss the chances of both and why we do think that these two candidates has the real chances to win. So, Bruce, uh, I think uh, we are talking about two candidates among these uh, 13 candidates in the process. So Atambayev seems to be, yeah, he's not running officially, but uh, he's also not sitting idle in this election, fully supporting Jean Bekov, I believe, as uh, Bakit uh, pointed. Now, is Atambayev's support helping him? Well, yeah, I mean, certainly the president has access to the media uh, and uh, generally the the population of Kyrgyzstan. So his going on TV, going on the radio, being quoted in the newspapers as being a supporter of Jay and Bekov, I suppose, uh, certainly keeps Jay and Bekov's name out there. Now, you know, of course, there are some people who aren't uh, favorably disposed toward President Atambayev. So, you know, I mean, it could kind of cut both ways in, in, in this particular case where people who weren't particularly well inclined toward Atambayev might be against Jay and Bekov just because of the close connection between the two, but certainly it does give J.M. Beck up a little extra publicity that the other candidates won't be able to enjoy during this election. There's there's no doubt about it. Uh, and I do agree that, you know, J.M. Beck up for, for many reasons is really important to Atambayev right now, and, and Atambayev would like to see him succeed. I, I Someone had written uh, a couple weeks ago that 
uh, it's easier to become president in Kyrgyzstan than it is to become the former president of Kyrgyzstan because they've had so many problems, uh, you know, running uh, Akayev, you know, of course, was chased from office in 2005 and Bakiyev in 2010. So uh, there's a lot of questions about what happens when you are no longer president. You, uh, The office itself defends you against many, many problems. Uh, and of course, we've seen, you know, in the case of Omar Tekibayev, uh, Omar Bektekibayev, that he had already accused Atambayev of, of having some illegal property, somehow having illegal property outside the country. So uh, once you're no longer president, you're you're more open to these kind of accusations. So it is uh, very important for Atambayev to see that Jayan Bekov wins this election. And, and of course, he's going to support him fully. If Jayan Bekov wins the election, it also means, I believe, that people in majority support uh, Atambayev's uh, position. In other words, this election is going to mean, I believe, is also a kind of a referendum for Atambayev's policies. Uh, Muhammad, may I join? Yeah, sure. I think one of the biggest mistakes of uh, uh, opposition, that it's uh, underestimation of the uh, ability of Atambayev to manipulate uh, state resources, uh, different clans and groups uh, for the promotion of his uh, personal political interests. If we look uh, attentively whom he pick up as a prime minister, as the main candidate to the presidency, we can see the following picture, and all these things are, are very connected. For instance, he established very good basis for the victory of his candidate. First of all, he uh, controls totally the law enforcement agencies, and actually he got allegiance of them, uh, providing them free housing, a salary better than it was before. And after that, he controls entirely the state uh, resources. And uh, he uh, got, let's say, the support of the majority of uh, labor migrants about uh, whom he is always uh, mentioning about the interest of the labor migrants. In the very recent uh, meeting with the, uh, Putin, he mentioned about the uh, minor thing, uh, driver's license in Russia. And uh, by this, he would like to support the, uh, let's say, uh, the majority of the Kyrgyz electorate. You know that almost uh, uh, every second family in Kyrgyzstan uh, as their uh, representatives as labor migrants in Russia, in uh, Kazakhstan. And therefore, they certainly would like, uh, let's say, better uh, relations with Russia, and they are pro-Russian. And after that, uh, you know, he uh, got the support of uh, Uzbek electorate because today Uzbeks in the south of Kyrgyzstan mm. are really happy uh, by the improvement of relations with Uzbekistan because mm. it is the chance for them to trade freely, more independently, get more income and to interact with their relatives and friends um, along the uh, state border with uh, Uzbekistan. And that's why I think uh, this is uh, the political capital uh, which he would like to uh, use. Mm. And after that, he thinks that uh, the uh, representatives of uh, sovereign clans uh, like Jane Bekov is a good choice. And he is very loyal. And he uh, himself with his family does not uh, have... Uh, let's say, uh, independent political uh, capital. Mm. And therefore, they, uh, for instance, he himself cannot compete uh, with uh, the key politicians in the Kyrgyzstan. And their capital based on their loyalty to Atambayev. Mm -hmm. And after that, he has not a human and enough financial resources to mobilize a large number of people on a, a national scale. And that's why uh, this is a, a good choice. Okay, Bakit, I have a couple of questions about what you have said. Obviously, I also want to give a microphone to Temur in some of that. So uh, if you think Atambayev is so confident about his candidate, Jean Bekov, then, uh, then why to put Tekebayev in jail? Then why all these legal hurdles against some of the candidates that we have seen who you think even does not have any chance of winning? 
you know? Well, act- well actually, I think that uh, actually he made such kind of actions because he was not so confident about Jen Bekov. I told you that Jen Bekov wasn't so active politician. And actually, if you um, one year ago, if you would ask who is Jen Bekov, for mm-hmm. example, in northern part of Kyrgyzstan, yeah, I actually doubt that, let's say, nine of ten people would, you know, understand who is that, yeah, except only Osh Oblast where he was a governor. And maybe that was kind kind of a message to other politicians who want to opposite to Atambaev, his policy, to SDPK, and to play with such kind of, you know, critic uh, messages yeah, during presidential election campaign. Because now we see, for example, that Kamchivek Tashiev, uh, leader of Atajurt party, yeah, he was actually very harsh, you know, critic of Atambaev and his policy. yeah, And he was actually um, playing and thinking uh, r- recent two years how to manage, uh, how to act during this presidential c- campaign. yeah. But now we are see that Tashiev actually uh, clearly uh, stated that he he would support Jen Bekov, yeah, and that was actually a little bit shock news mm. uh, for opposition as well, yeah. And mm. actually, Babanov, when he is running his uh, presidential campaign and when he is criticizing SDPK of using administration uh, resource, yeah, mm. he is uh, speaking such kind of critic very attentively, mm. yeah, because all of these uh, candidates, politicians, have uh, some kind of, let's say, dirty cases yeah, mm-hmm. in their back. Uh, uh, and they could end up like Tikibayev, yeah? So Tikibayev, it was kind of a clear message to other opposition candidates, yeah? Mm-hmm. So there is kind of an invisible line for Babanov and other mm-hmm. candidates who are not for SDPK, yeah? Mm-hmm. And I also want, what I want to actually uh, add um, sh- shortly, yeah? Mm-hmm. Objectively saying, actually, in Kyrgyzstan, people tend to, you know, always support authority. I mean, if, for example, Atambay would run for the second term, despite, I think, other candidates, actually, people would vote for Atambay because he's been working for six years, he has made some kind of actions, and people are saying, we are kind of, uh, you know, satisfied with him and we want to continue this policy. Hmm. Uh, Mohan, let me to uh, answer to your very important uh, question and after that uh, to explain uh, what kind of factors can destroy Atambayev's plans. Okay. First, you uh, ask about uh, why he uh, be if he was so confident, yeah. uh, is confident why he jailed uh, Tekebayev. Uh, I didn't say that he uh, is confident. I said that he has the real chances hmm. to uh, just uh, achieve the victory in these uh, elections. And uh, because uh, he will use entire administrative resources of a state, certainly, in uh, multiple ways. And they are very competent in doing these uh, un- invisible things. After that, uh, his team has uh, uh, enough uh, financial resources. And a third one, uh, we have um, uh, enough uh, human resources. And I know today, in some way, in even in detail, what they're doing in the provinces, how they're mobilizing people, and through what kind of tactics we're trying to just uh, uh, get the votes of the people. But they are not idle. They are not just uh, 100% confident that uh, they can uh, just achieve uh, this victory easily. Hmm. He has jailed Tekebaev because uh, Tekebaev, uh, he was the only person who was able to destroy his political legend. Because he has started, as Bruce said, investigate uh, Atambayev's uh, business roads. And uh, if he will succeed, it means he uh, can destroy uh, his entire legend as the only and uh, the most honest uh, uh, politician in Kyrgyzstan. And he is desired to be the father of the nation. Mm. That's why he did everything in order uh, to just uh, um, keep take a uh, behind the bar. He succeeded in that, and uh, all the supporters of take a uh, unfortunately, they failed to mobilize people against the regime of Atambayev. Mm. Therefore, uh, it is one of the indicators of the capability of his uh, team 
to uh, just uh, resist uh, to uh, opposition. I'm shifting to the second. What can destroy? Babana. It's two very important factors. First, uh, it's financial resources of Babana, and he is spending a lot. And uh, we can imagine uh, how much he can spend uh, uh, invisibly. And uh, it already making a difference in Kyrgyzstan. You can see that a certain number of people were uh, supporting uh, Babana. But the second factor is, why today he is so bold? And uh, why he is just uh, trying to attack the uh, candidate of Atambayev and indirectly he uh, attacks the uh, regime and the political construction uh, created uh, by Atambayev. It seems to me that he get the uh, support of a certain people in Russia who are lobbying his interest in Kremlin. And therefore, today, the main question, who among the main candidates uh, would be perfectly matched to the future interests of Russia in Kyrgyzstan, understanding that Russia has a base here, uh, here and uh, therefore it is vital for keeping a uh, military um, uh, division in Tajikistan and so on. That's why I think that, uh, for instance, if uh, Babanov, with his uh, lobbyist uh, in Moscow, will succeed, it, uh, certainly it can create the uh, danger for uh, the plans of Atambayev. Yeah, you also have the Russian factor there, but let's uh, discuss that in, in the second part of the discussion before we end the first part, Bruce. So in this scenario, uh, both of our panelists are talking about these two key candidates in which uh, Gene Bekov is kind of seen favorably to make it. So uh, what are the chances that Babanov can offer tough competition against Gene Bekov? in this situation. The second is, Bruce, a few days ago, I have seen an opposition effort to unite. Even Otombaeva was uh, waving into the push. I think they are talking about a broad coalition of some sort. What is happening in that front? Uh, okay, well, let me answer the second part first. You know, I mean, Kyrgyz, Kyrgyz politics are extremely dynamic, and, and the merging of parties and uh, and the search for support uh, from other groups is has been a part of Kyrgyz elections, you know, really going way, way back in, into the 19, in 1995 for that, that matter. So uh, there is this, uh, this precedent already. Uh, it's, it's part of their political history that, that groups uh, get together. I mean, we just saw it, for instance, Bobanov before the last parliamentary elections, he, he uh, joined efforts with the Atajurt party, uh, you know, of uh, Kamchibek Tashiev. Uh, and, and they ran and, and they got the second most amount of seats, um, you know, so so we already have even even a recent example of how that works. You know, there was this effort by um, Toroboya from uh, Oinugu uh, Progress, Tashiev again from Atajurt and Keldebekov also from Atajurt and uh, Madamara from Butun Kyrgyzstan to, to form this this party, this renaissance Vazarajdinia uh coalition right before that it, it kind of fell apart but we but we see that this is you know again here here's another attempt to try to boost your chances before elections the idea was they were going to uh, nominate a single candidate uh you know as far as like these these mergers or these political unions uh which are designed to to improve chances at elections yeah sure and in fact you know even today our kyrgyz service reported that uh, supposedly Babanov is in talks with a uh, Toroboev, uh, you know, to, and there was some some tandem kind of deal similar to what we saw with Bakiev and Kulov in uh, 2005, whereby if Babanov wins, he would give the uh, post of prime minister to, to Toroboev. Um, so, uh, you know, we see this all the time uh, mm -hmm. and we're seeing it again in, in Kyrgyz elections. This is nothing new. Uh, and I would I would say that really some of the a lot of the candidates that we are not talking about uh, who probably don't have a lot of chances are in this election uh, because they sense that that they will be able to cut a deal here somewhere along the line by throwing their support behind uh, one of the two primary candidates and they'll get something out of this in the end uh, ministerial posts something like that you know so that's that's why 
uh, we do have this many people uh, in the election is because there is some political advantage to be gained by uh, by participating in it. Now, as far as um, can a Bobanov offer competition? Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, there's the characters of the two front runners that we're talking about are very, very different. Uh, Jay and Beckup, although I've heard that that he's actually very charismatic and, and a very pleasant person to, to be with, he does not come across that way when you when you see him uh you know i mean one of his most famous moments in, in from the last few months is when he kicked out a uh, a minister at one of the parliamentary meetings and he had a, a very serious look on his face which is usually what he does have on his face but bonov is very energetic he comes across as being very energetic he's much younger he's he's 47 i believe and and jay and Beckov is 60 but will be 61 very soon and so there's a difference between the perception of the character of the candidates too uh you know the bavanov just comes across as much a much more energetic candidate and if you remember when they handed in their their signatures over to the C, you know the central election commission bavanov had this big show going on he had people dressed in orange shirts that arrived with boxes full of the you know the the signatures to deliver to the Central Election Commission. And, and so this is what Jay and Beckov is really up against. He's He's got a showman running against him, you know, in Babanov, that, that Babanov will reaches out. And, and let's not uh, forget that there's there, there's also something of a generation gap running through this too. I mean, there's mm-hmm. there's uh, there's the older crowd that that probably would support someone like like uh, Atambayev if they had a chance again. But we're getting a youth movement coming in. People like Janar Akaya, for instance, who is in parliament. And there's a there's a whole list of this younger crowd of of candidates and and politically active people uh, to whom someone like Babanov will probably appeal just mm. because he is a lot more dynamic than uh, than Jay and Beckup. And, and in polls that have been run by some Kyrgyz media outlets, Jay and, uh, Babanov is far, far ahead of mm. the other uh, the other competitors. Uh, he's sometimes he's the only one that even gets double digits, you know, in these these surveys that they run, whereas Jay and, uh, Jay and Beckup will get eight percent and you know Bovanov is 37 percent or something like that yeah. so uh, you certainly can't discount him such an interesting discussion i really want to continue but we also uh, need to give a break here but very briefly bruce so what are the chances of this going to the second round i really think it will i don't think either one you know you have to have 50 percent plus one vote to to make it out right uh, and like i said the polls that have been out and of, and of course you know we we've seen that there's been a lot of problems with trusting too much in polls uh in the last couple of years but uh in other countries um so but i i do not see that either jay and beckup or bobanov could get 50 percent plus one vote and and if i was going to pr- make a prediction i would predict that though they are going to go through to a second round of voting in november Okay, so this is what we have been seeing so far on the domestic uh, political scene of Kyrgyzstan. So what is ahead leading to the elections day? And most importantly, how one should imagine the day after the election? We will continue the discussion debating this and many other questions shortly. Hey everyone, before we get into the second part of the show, just a quick reminder that if you really like Majli's podcast, there's a real chance that you will also like my other radio show that's called Gandhara Podcast. The show discusses latest developments in Pakistan and Afghanistan from local perspective. And the podcast is published in every second week on Radio Free Europe Radio Liberty's Gandhara website. It's a totally must-follow discussion for foreign policy nerds with interest in the region. First, let me recap the debate that today on the Majlis Radio Free Europe Radio Liberty Central Asia podcast, we are discussing the forthcoming elections in Kyrgyzstan and it is local and beyond the border consequences. Joining me in the discussion are Bakit Pashimov, who is the former Kyrgyz parliamentarian and currently professor at the Northeastern University in Boston, Timur Toktonaliyev, Central Asia editor at the Institute for War and Peace Reporting, and Bruce Panier, editor of Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty's Central Asia blog called Kishlag Awazi. I am Mohammed Tahir, host of the Majlis here in Washington, D.C. Welcome back, gentlemen, to the Majlis. Now, it's really an interesting discussion. Uh, ideas are just floating. We really need to keep this part uh, short, gentlemen. So, 
first, I want to go to you, uh, Timur. So what are the scenarios going forward until the elections days? Is there any signs of trouble? What are the things that we should be paying attention to? Well, probably now I don't see such kind of, I mean, serious uh, threats, such kind of big maybe mass protest before the election, yeah? But uh, now uh, we actually recently receiving uh, from different sides of our country uh, signs uh, about using administrative resource in uh, for JNBK. For example, uh, Babanov's, uh, his team actually complained to their general prosecutor's office that actually uh, teachers in the um, uh, one major university in Bishkek, yeah, they are told openly to the students that you should vote for Jane Bekov. And we actually will reveal uh, if you will vote to other uh, person, yeah, and we will f- punish you. Mm. And we actually, and I read news uh, that, for example, in south part of Kyrgyzstan, in Arawan district, as I remember, there was a, a local uh, governor of the Turian. He was actually also trying to work uh, for Jane Becker, for SDPK, yeah? And such kind of complaints are actually going to the prosecutor's office uh, against only Jane Becker. And there is actually a fear that administrative resource will be widely used. And, you know, before I talk to... Um, different people uh, from hospitals and schools and I ask them maybe such kind of a naive question yeah Yeah. Uh, well we are hearing that from the government media that actually government they will not allow using administrative resource do you believe that you won't be pushed yeah by your hats yeah in in Mm -hmm. schools and hospital uh, work for for Jane Bekov, let's say, for example, and they actually laughed <laughs> and they said that uh, they're sure that they actually will have to work. Yeah, mm-hmm. will have to use uh, administrative resources uh, in order to gain uh, more votes for Jane Bekov. And this is actually concerning. Yeah. And if such kind of cases will be widened yeah, in, in the different part of the country, and if, for example, uh, some candidates, let's say Babanov or others, yeah, they will manage to uh, uh, mobilize some portion of people for demonstrations, mm-hmm. maybe there would be some kind of a conflict, anger from people, from people yeah that you are using all t- such kind of uh, techniques yeah from archive and bakirs period so this might be a possible conflict let's uh, take uh, bakit your point in this law in kyrgyzstan whenever there is an election we see issues involving regionalism like corruption and all these things what kind of things you are looking at as kyrgyzstan is leading up to elections for uh, election is so important to understand what kind of factors uh, determine the uh, outcomes of this election mm. uh, in Kyrgyzstan. And the second one, uh, what kind of scenario we can uh, see and uh, why we see these scenarios. Uh, firstly, uh, I think that uh, I see some destabilization in a post-election Kyrgyzstan if, in the case if uh, Atambayev uh, will uh, lose this election uh-huh. only. And because this transition period can create some kind of uh, uh, trouble for uh, different camps and they will uh, try to adjust the balance uh, and so on. I see this kind. But uh, in my view, uh, it will not be so dangerous. But I don't have enough uh, evidence today to say that it will happen. Uh, Why? Because I just uh, would like to explain the factors. The factors is, as I mentioned, is administrative resources. And uh, uh, using administrative resources, today, uh, Kyrgyz authorities, officials, the presence of Atambayev camp have uh, effective methods to control the voting process. And after that, they control the uh, process of counting the votes, and uh, despite the presence of observers and so on. And uh, the uh, second one, it's money. They are using a lot of money. And today, majority of the people just uh, having daily problems with the income and so on, they tend to just be uh, victims of this kind of uh, approach to them as representatives of electorate. And the third one, ability to uh, just uh, play uh, tribal policy 
For instance, if you uh, look at the two candidates, we can say that Jane Berkov and General Atambayev can uh, control uh, Osh Oblas. Uh, today, at least uh, half of uh, uh, Jalalabad Oblast and uh, certainly Batken Oblast. And majority of votes uh, in the south of uh, Kyrgyzstan. Babanov uh, can uh, get uh, many votes in these uh, provinces too. But uh, before the election, I think that uh, they will do something in order to limit the uh, opportunities of Babanov to mobilize uh, the people, and uh, they will do uh, just uh, do uh, something against him. All our candidates, they can uh, just get some votes, but they can uh, succeed only if they will unite under one candidate. Because uh, before the election, uh, I will not surprise if we'll see that uh, some candidates will do, join to uh, J.M. Baker, like Tashif and so on. Mm-hmm. Because uh, Kyrgyz authorities, Kyrgyz presidents always use this is buy-off policy, and it's, it's uh, relatively successful. Yeah, and yeah. therefore, they will just today invisibly uh, from uh, the electorate uh, negotiating. And probably they will start very soon to negotiate about the uh, post-election uh, balance of power, about what kind of state positions they can get. And uh, Atambayev with Jane Becker, they are able to offer uh, many of them something that they cannot reject. Mm. And uh, uh, therefore, I think um, uh, if uh, Babanov get uh, strong assurances from, let's say, Moscow, that he will be protected after the election, and uh, he will uh, continue to be bold in these uh, elections. Okay. Very quickly, Bruce, so um, any role that the Tekabayev's detention playing in this election, like any sign of tension? And the second thing is, Bruce, you were in Bishkek last time when the election uh, was taking place. Was it the parliamentarian or the presidential? I don't remember, but you were there. We had a discussion with you when you were in Kyrgyzstan. So based on your previous experiences, is corruption will be an issue in this election? Well, corruption was was one of the primary, uh, at least stated issues that in the last election. Uh, and it was parliamentary elections in 2015. Mm. And I was all over the country, actually. Uh, I made a point of going to each one of the oblasts. Uh, and did 3,000 kilometers in 21 days just so I could see as much as possible. Yes, of, of course, corruption, but corruption's a perennial. Uh, you know, they, they're all, everyone is going to promise that they're going to stamp out corruption and, and that kind of stuff. Now, you know, so, so we'll see. I mean, there's some issues that you're always going to bring up. Uh, you know, uh, again, corruption's one, getting the economy going a little bit quicker, uh, more jobs for people, a better share of the Kumtor gold mine, things like that. I mean, this stuff is always out there uh, every time they do these elections. So, yeah, I'm sure you're going to hear these kind of promises. Um, as far as the techie buy of uh, thing, you know, I, I personally didn't think that he probably would have had a chance to win the presidency. Yeah. And and so far, it's been pretty quiet. I mean, uh, I don't agree with the process that was uh, the judicial process against him. I have a lot of problems with with how that worked. Um, but but the thing is that it, that it has passed. But it is one of those things that's still out there on the table. Uh, and what we've seen whenever there's been problems in Kyrgyzstan, is is a lot of issues build up, and it, the the strangest things can spark unrest that you wouldn't think would would be enough. But it's it's like you know the, what they could the, the proverbial last straw that that broke the camel's back. Um, so the Techie Bayev issue is there. If more issues such as that are added to it, uh, then you could have a problem. And let's not forget that one of the candidates is Azimbek Beknazarov, uh, who is, for lack of a better way to put it, uh, great at causing uh, some disturbance in the system. He manages to mobilize people uh, and get them out and, and get them angry and making a lot of noise about different things. And he's in the election now, although technically I believe there are they're filing charges against him or there are file, they have filed charges against him of perjury in, in, in the Techie Bayev trial. So, you know, he's out there. And and if somebody like that gets loose and starts telling his constituents that the election is unfair and that the people are being robbed of a free and fair election, then, yeah, uh, you know, we could have problems that that would just be more fuel added to a potential fire caused by issues of which Techie Bayev's case is only one.
Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Muhammad, I would like just to uh, add to, to what Bruce uh, said. Mm. Um, corruption is not the issue. Corruption is uh, essential of uh, Kyrgyz politics. And uh, it's uh, in way high it occurs. And regarding with Tekabayev, uh, you see that um, it's just, be, uh, it seems to me, beginning of a process. And uh, if he uh, will succeed, uh, I mean Atambayev, uh, he will continue the uh, persecution uh, for people who go against him. Okay, so let's uh, end the discussion with a very brief point looking into the future. Um, let's start with you, maybe, Bruce. So what does this mean to Kyrgyzstan in the region if Jean Bekov elected? And what if Babanov is elected? Well, of course, if Jean Bekov is elected, this is just a continuation of the policies of Atambayev. And I, I suppose that would be the smoothest way for the transition. Um, Babanov... Of course, we don't know exactly what would happen if he was in there, but he might actually inject a little bit of dynamism into the Kyrgyz government that we have not seen before. And I would mention one thing, too, because we talked, you know, it was mentioned earlier that he seems to have some connections in Russia. But I found it very, very curious that when the Uzbek president recently visited Kyrgyzstan, he was being uh, introduced to the various leaders of political parties. And he, and when he was introduced to Babanov, he, he actually stopped and said, I think I've heard something about you. It was a very curious moment. So you had to wonder if that wasn't some kind of hint uh, from Tashkent that, that Babanov was an acceptable candidate for them. You know, certainly if Babanov could fulfill half the promises that he's already starting to make, you'd have to say that that was a good thing for Kyrgyzstan. Um, uh, although, you know, I think the, the last thing I can say on that is the most important thing about this election is that it goes well and that we really don't have any problems and that whoever is declared the victor, we're not going to see mass protests or anything like that. It's not just important for Kyrgyzstan. It's important for all of Central Asia to see that we can have a peaceful transition of, of power uh, you know, and, and have a new president elected without there being a lot of problems uh, in the aftermath of the, of the election. Okay. On the same point, uh, Bakit Temur, whoever wants to jump in? I think that the f- uh, foreign observers of this election will create a, a contextual or picture of this election, very particularistic uh, story, saying that in comparison with the personality cult established in Turkmenistan, in Tajikistan, with the uncertainty in Uzbekistan, who is in transition, and with the inevitable uh, dominance of the supreme leader of Kazakhstan, of course, uh, uh, any results of election in Kyrgyzstan is uh, uh, just one step uh, forward. Uh, therefore, uh, I don't see today any uh, serious causes for the, uh, let's say, dangerous destabilization mm-hmm. of uh, Kyrgyzstan. Okay. Temur? Uh, well, it is so obvious that if Jan Bekov will be president, the Atambayev's policy will be continued. But also there is a fear, since Jan Bekov has got a lot of brothers mm-hmm. and relatives from southern part of Kyrgyzstan, that all those you know relatives will be involved, unprofessional relatives, I mean, will, will, will be involved to the big policy yeah, and present ineffective work of administration. There is a fear, but hope that Sapar Isakov and his team will kind of, you know, bring some dynamic and uh, if Babano wins uh, there is a big fear that he will make uh, Kyrgyzstan kind of a big corporation in order to you know making benefits only for himself but not for the society okay thank you very much for your thoughts and insight Timur Toktanaliyev Central Asia editor at the Institute for War and Peace Reporting and big thanks to Bakit Vashimov, who's the former Kyrgyz parliamentarian and currently professor at the Northeastern University in Boston, and Bruce Panier, editor of Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty's Central Asia blog, Kishlok Owazi. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And this is it from me, Mohamed Tahir, host of the Majlis Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty's Central Asia podcast. Until next week, bye-bye.